Make sure you guys subscribe to Cat Harvey SNL on YouTube and make sure you stay tuned to my exclusive interview with Dylan and Dakota Gonzalez. Hi guys, it's Dylan. And I'm Dakota. And uh, we are Gons and we watch our girl Cat Harvey at success, nothing less. Hey, what's up, world? I'm Kat Harvey, the CEO of the top-rated show, Cage SNL. Today, we got two superstar moguls in the house. I'm very excited <laughs> to have them. <laughs> Not only are they beautiful, classy, smart, intelligent women, man, I see great things for them being future uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, they're involved in music, basketball superstars, and I mean, their parents have done an incredible job with them. They're beautiful. They're tall like me. Um, and they're bosses, so I definitely had to have them on today. So please welcome the sisters, uh, Dylan and Dakota. How you guys doing? Hi, we're great. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, <laughs> we're pretty excited. Thank you guys for coming. Um, so can you guys introduce yourselves to the world for those who may or may not know you? Yeah, well, um, I'm Dylan Gonzalez, and uh, I mostly go by Dill. I'm the older twin by 10 minutes. Uh, play basketball for UNLV, number 11, and we sing, and we're a group, and we're known as Gons, so I guess I'm one half of Gons. Yeah, one of two Gons. One of two Gons. Um, so I'm Dakota, and uh, I go by a multitude of nicknames, but we'll stick with Coda. And I will say that I'm also one of two Gons, and I'm sorry my voice is so, like, crusty today. We were, we're actually in the studio until, like, 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, guys. Oh, I see you guys are very um, big about your parents. So out of all the lessons they probably shared and instilled you guys, what's some of the important ones that stick out to you the most as far as – that and how it's helped you with your life? Um, you know, I think that one of the things that we're really appreciative that our parents taught us is definitely to work hard, um, to be respectful, and to have faith. Those are really things that kind of um, have stuck with us throughout our adult life, through our childhood, and not only as ideas, but as actions, too. Absolutely. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys really 6'1"? Uh, we're actually 5'10", but... They like to pat your style a little bit. Yeah, but so. our, our oh, stats on like, basketball, it's like we're six feet because if you get I a, feel like I play like I'm about... There you go. Six, it's about four. how you play. You can you can say... You could be 5'5 five, five and play 6'4", you know? So, yeah. That's, that's the kind of The guys do it go. all the time. So. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> um, man, you guys are so humble. It's so funny. Um, you guys talk about the misconceptions of yourself. And I actually went back and I was looking at some of your interviews. Let's say I need to get a sense of who I'm going to be talking to um, <laughs> before I have them on. So what are the biggest you know, misconceptions you think that people have about you guys? Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I think that like a, a, with social media and being so exposed on social media, anybody can kind of try and gauge who you are based on your social media. And I would say for Dylan and I, we really don't put our entire lives on social media. So people are really getting like this much of who we are. And because of that, I think one of the, the biggest misconceptions is people kind of play into the stereotypes of what someone with a lot of Instagram followers should be like or is like. And usually that comes with being stuck up or kind of into themselves or arrogance. Um, and and we're definitely not that way. Uh, we I would say that, as Dylan kind of mentioned earlier, our parents definitely instilled very important morals in us at a very young age. And, you know, being humble and being grounded, that's kind of something that, that came very, like, naturally to us in a way, but it was something that our parents definitely put an emphasis on. And we honestly just like to be super chill people that like to have a good time and be 22-year-olds. And sometimes we do dumb things, but we really just try to be good people at the end of the day. And so I would say that that one thing people definitely have a misconception of us is, is that we kind of fit into that stereotype of what, like, someone Insta-famous might be like. Okay. So I want to get to the part that people don't see, you know, behind the pretty eyes and the lashes. <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I want you guys to talk about rejection. You know, I've seen some of your interviews and I feel like they didn't dig deep enough to you guys outside of, of what we see. Um, I want you to talk about the rejection piece and how you've dealt with that, especially with the nose. And I know you guys have had some closed doors. So can you guys talk about that for a second? 
Yeah, definitely. You know, um, it's actually really funny that you even say that because we talk about that all the time. Like, man, people just don't know. Like, you really kind of just look at other people and just kind of think like, oh, you like have everything you want or whatever it is. And I think that for us, um, a lot of people don't realize kind of how seriously we take our crafts. So basketball and music. And um, there's been definitely a lot of dark days in those corners. Um, I know that like for us personally on a basketball level, we've definitely struggled as far as um, as far as like staying motivated, um, we went through some things like people telling us we couldn't do it, couldn't get to where we wanted to get to. Um, we've been cut from um, like certain teams, things like that growing up. Um, but then honestly, it just came down to like working hard. We really had to put like a lot of hours into our craft. And that's another thing that again, our parents definitely taught us was that no matter what anybody tells you, um, no matter what you know like your circumstances are you can always work as hard as possible to try to get to where you want to get to and i think that's one of the things that has helped us kind of land where we are now is just that belief in ourselves yeah i mean kind of tag teaming on that um another misconception actually uh is definitely that we don't play basketball and that we're not serious about it and and same with music i think people kind of with music is a little different <clears throat> because people can kind of hear your sound if they're interested and whatnot. But with basketball, it's kind of like you have a, a selective and limited window of kind of seeing our games or keeping up with what we're doing and, and everything like that. So it's definitely be makes it very difficult for people to, to kind of keep up with us in that lane. And so because of that, they're like, oh, they don't hoop. And, and you see, and we see that all the time. And, and honestly, even growing up, it's not like we were like the top one and two players in our class or anything like that. We were definitely top. In Idaho. In Idaho we were. But <laughs> another struggle has been with music just in the sense of we've been rejected by not only some family members, but by some of our fans and people who have um, supported our basketball careers and kind of entering into this new industry and, that and crossover into a different profession. And not that we are professional basketball players, but just entering into kind of a new career path. Field. And um and that's been difficult because you almost start doubting yourself. Like, okay, if someone this close to me who's supported me my entire life suddenly doesn't believe in me and in, in doing something that I'm just as much, you know, committed to and I'm just as passionate about, like, can I really do this? Am I, you know, Am I savvy enough? enough? Am I, you know, aware enough to know how to navigate through this industry? Um, and that's something that's very difficult, but we're so fortunate to have each other and to be able to kind of keep ourselves motivated um, through each other, honestly. It's blessings. Blessings. <laughs> so, you know, what are your top, I guess, two or three sister commandments that you guys can't break? But I have one because she almost broke it the other day. <laughs> so, no, if this no was, I did not. This was not like that serious. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but... Um, it's kind of like a girl code thing. Yeah. So uh, Dylan and I, when we were younger, we kind of got in this little fight over a guy. And um, ever since that day, we're like, you know what? We're going to make a rule so that if we both like the same guy, then like we know who's going to get to kind of pick. So basically, if the guy can't tell us apart and he wants either one of us, which would be an issue anyway, but um, we kind of have this dibs rule. So it's like if you see the guy first or if he contacts you first or if you somehow have some sort of something to do with the before guy the first one. before the other twin, then you automatically get the dibs on that guy. We ha really haven't had that problem. I don't know why she would say that. Okay, but the other day, <laughs> there, there's this guy that I'm actually still trying to get in contact with. So, John, if you're out there. Oh, my gosh. I thought you were talking about Lonnie. Oh, oh no. That was a that bartender. Was a He's not serious. But – um, basically there's this guy that I used to talk to a long time ago, like literally like fifth or fourth and fifth literally, grade. Literally we were like 11 years old. Doesn't really count. But still Dylan was the one that actually saw him first, like all glowed and grown up. And so she was like, I get the dibs. And I was like, oh. <laughs> no, and there's another code, which is you don't talk to someone your sister has talked to. So that we cancels were 11 out. Eleven years old, Dakota. You didn't even like <laughs> him. He was my first. You talked kiss. to him for a week. I liked him enough to talk to him for a week. So, I mean, anyway, it's fine. I decided that I just want <sighs> my credit if you get married. <sighs> so. But that's probably that's probably like one. Um, on a more serious note, you probably oh, you're thinking hard. Yeah. I, I would say on a more serious note, like. 
um, we definitely know each other like super, super well. So we just kind of have like a, a loyalty, I guess, to each other. And it just kind of goes deeper than like a friendship. I honestly almost feel bad for people that don't have twins because it's just. Well, that don't have twins that have like this kind of relationship. Because like, relationship. Yeah. I know some twins that like hate Yikes. each other's guts. But we just, um, we just kind of have like this loyalty to one another where like regardless of the situation, no matter how bad it is, no matter how embarrassed you are, um, that we're able to tell each other whatever that situation yeah. may be. Yeah, definitely I'd say the loyalty aspect because like no matter what, because we've even had some instances like throughout like this year and probably this last week actually, where it's kind of like sometimes we're usually always on the same page as far as like decisions or mindset or like just whatever it is we're thinking. Um, but some, there are those rarities where one of us will kind of be like, I agree with that. But regardless, we're always kind of going to be like on each other's team. And I remember, um, somebody had asked right us, or wrong. right or right or wrong. We're always going to, so even if like, she's wrong about something, I'm still going to like be on her side before I'm on, you know, the person who's right side. But there was my, one of my teammates even asked us, they were like, so like, like just an example, like if your sister um like wasn't able to start or something because of like something she did like would you would you feel comfortable starting still and i was like no as a woman you know i know you guys are out and about and i know the guys are coming <laughs> so i, I wish <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> i know not sure <laughs> Are, the, are you ever um do you ever think about you know the guys that come up to you or even the guys who have it you know do you ever think that they may be intimidated by your beauty and success and how do you deal with that um honestly <laughs> i do feel like there have been some guys that are, there have been guys who vocalize that they are like a little intimidated or shy or whatever it is and 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 we're like kind of we're flattered by that actually we're like oh because for us it's just a matter of like you think um i guess h highly of me like you think and like a you hold me in like yeah a high you hold esteem. me to a high esteem and that's like really like flattering to us um there have been like other times and i personally feel like for me dylan people are like legitimately like afraid of me like dakota she's a little bit more like bubbly and stuff and i kind of just have like this very chill introspective intuitive side to me where i just kind of like observe and like you get my feels and kind of see the vibes of everybody where Dakota's just kind of like instantly like open and happy to everyone. So I sometimes get that like, you know, what's it called? RBF or something that resting B face. So <laughs> I think yes. people get a little scared. Legitimately. Yeah. It's so funny. Cause, um, and I'm the nice one. That's what's funny. she's the nicer one when it comes to certain things, but I'm, I'm, nice. I'm nice. Um, anyway, so I would say when it comes to um, like guys uh, of being intimidated, like Dylan said, it's definitely there. I per like on a personal level, I don't like when guys almost try to like act like they try to overcome like compensate that right intimidation good by being thing. like arrogant almost and and it's like oh i have to show her that i'm just as confident or that i'm just or as like i'm natural you know I, I have a, just as much success or like whatever it is and then it's just really awkward because then it's like ooh, this is such like an like it's just not an authentic vibe so you're like, like so but it's definitely there and i would say for us like guys that are intimidated that genuinely kind of express that we're just like yo we're chill people you know you gotta worry about it like it's cute it's all good and then guys that are kind of like on the more arrogant side or guys that like try to act like they don't know us so they can't like put us on a pedestal but it's, or we, something. you always catch them though because they always slip up like they'll be like hey like i'll be by myself like hey girl like how you doing i'm just like oh i'm good and they're like yeah so like what's your name and i'm like oh dylan then all of a sudden they'll be just like, oh yeah, that's nice. Like da 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 da. So like, how's you and LV? And you're like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I definitely didn't say anything right. about you and LV. Right. So those guys are like super awkward because it's just I like get so uncomfortable. We, I, I'm like, uh, and I kind of see where they're coming from because like we said about the stereotypes, like they probably don't want like to feed into that and be like, oh, if I tell them I know them, they're gonna get like big headed, right? They're gonna big time. But we're just something. not like we're that. Not so it's time. so awkward when guys try to do that and. Honestly, I just try to keep it super short at that point, and I'm like, I'm probably coming off just like the damn stereotype because I'm over here like, mm-hmm, yep. Okay. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs> right. so, speaking on you guys, um, what's the best part do you guys think you bring out in each other? Hmm. 
That's a good, good one. one. I think for um for me, I would probably say like an unwavering faith. And um I say that because like I even like we've had like a multitude of conversations as you can imagine. But I just remember at one point when I was kind of like at reaching that like bottom. Um I just remember I prayed because we're very, very spiritual people. We don't call ourselves religious. We just say we're very spiritual people. And I remember I was just praying to God, like when I was in this space. And I was just like, God, like, I just, I don't need you to, I don't need you to, um, like, do it for me. I just need you to be by my side to, like, help me get out of the hole. I just need somebody by my side who believes in me. And then as I was, like, kind of sitting there, like, praying, like, to myself, um, I just kind of had this moment of like, like an awe moment, almost like an epiphany. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like you're a genius God. Like you already knew I was going to ask this of you. And that's why I have this person right here next to me to like pull me through all of these times. Like, so I just say an unwavering faith for sure. Gosh, that's a good one. That's kind of hard to shop. Um, no, <laughs> I, I would just say that, um, one thing that that Dylan definitely brings out of me is is probably um like faith is definitely a good one but in more of the like not so spiritual side of things i would just say like um a dedication almost to the craft like never never giving in what's a word that kind of encompasses that mm, perseverance <laughs> yeah perseverance like that's definitely like along those lines of faith but actually I just talked to myself in my own head and thought that Dylan, like Dylan kind of mentioned earlier, she's like the nicer sister. Um, but she really genuinely is such a good person and people will probably never understand that unless they really get to meet her and kind of be in her, her space. And I'm a little more like, I'm really nice and bubbly and all that. But when it comes to like getting on a serious level or people trying to get deeper connections with me and stuff, I'm very like, whoa, chill, like, nah. That's, I keep it very surface with a lot of people just because it's kind of like a protective mechanism for myself. So with Dill, she's so forgiving. She's like, she's honestly very Christ-like. And I, I say that for those who kind of are familiar with, you know, Christianity and, and everything. And Dylan is very Christ-like and she's just super forgiving and super loving and people could do like the worst things to her. And I still have grudges against them. And she is like totally forgiving of those people. And I would say that she's definitely kind of opened up my heart to, to that and to trying to be a more forgiving, more loving person in the sense of like kind of just letting things go that are negative and not letting them kind of consume me and 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 where I'm trying to go. Um what's the biggest story that you guys have told yourself that you had to kind of get rid of? Honestly, I just think it mostly has to do with like doubt. Um just because I we've realized like kind of like a theme of our answers here is that at the end of the day we kind of have to like have that belief in ourselves just because no matter like what happens, like nobody else is gonna put in the work for us anyways. Nobody else needs to believe in us more than like we believe in ourselves than like Christ believes in us. And um, so we kind of like take that and roll. So any kind of doubt that we've ever had and, and especially for whatever reason, this year was kind of like a year for Dakota to kind of have those little moments where, and I think it's when you start to hit that like um, wall of like meeting reality of like your situation and your circumstances. And when you really hit that wall, you kind of get scared. Like, and I told Dakota, uh, I just remember saying, hey, Coda, like, you can't be afraid of the dark. Like, that's just it. Like, point blank period. You can't be afraid of the dark. And um, and I think it's just that that putting, putting that doubt out of our mind, that no matter what, like, you can legitimately accomplish anything that you put your mind to if you really believe that. Yeah, I would just say that, um, yeah, this year, man, oh, oh geez, <laughs> all was like a waterworks show. Um, but I would just say that uh, it's like, it's so difficult to, to kind of picture yourself in an unknown space. Um, and we're, we're definitely people who have, who visual, have to visualize things. We have to visualize like ourselves in a particular space. We have to visualize ourselves being where we want to be for us to truly achieve those goals. And I would say for me that the story I was kind of starting to tell myself at one point was like, you don't really see yourself in that space. And so you can't really get there. And what's interesting is 
I've never really seen myself kind of just doing like, you know, working in an office or, and, you know, I've never like, I've never been able to put myself in that space ever, like my entire life. I would just always felt like, and Dylan and I, we, we kind of feel like we have like a greater purpose and it does, it has, it goes so far beyond like fame and like money and materialistic superficial things. We really feel like we're here to kind of share our voice with people and to help other people. We kind of feel like, everyone kind of feels like I have, they have a calling. And we sort of feel like that's our calling. Like we feel like our calling is to, you know, actually we have a legit phrase. I have a phrase. <laughs> we have a legit it phrase. It stems from when I was like, I, when I tell you this is like the realest thing, I was in my doll room. We were playing, Dakota and I were playing Barbies. We were like really low. We were like six or seven. And I looked at her, I just stopped playing. And she's like, what's wrong, Dylan? I said, I said, Coda, I want to save the world. Literally, that's what I said. And that was a pretty, you know, uh, um, bold statement. However, it just kind of is like a symbolism of like what we want to do. So we kind of have this phrase now, which is um, save the world, change a culture. So like that's kind of like our our theme, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and um, we've worked with like, you know, plenty of, of foundations. We were actually trying to work on creating our own. So it's like, we really want to have a bigger voice to be able to reach those people. And it was like, it just, what everything sort of coincided so well because it was like, and we like to do music. So like, why not do music and let that be our voice? Because it is a universal language. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows music. Everybody speaks the language. So we're like, this is perfect. So it was just kind of like, we felt like, okay, that is our calling. Like that is, that is our godsend. That is why we're here. And so when I started doubting that and I started creating that story of like, it was, it was like, I really started doubting my own faith. And I was like, well, all of this is just in my own head. I'm re like, am I really this person or am I just like everybody else and I'm just here to live and die you know like I it, and that sounds like so dramatic I am a dramatic person I'll admit that but it just really started getting into my my head and I was and I would tell Dylan every day I'm like Dylan I just don't know I just don't know and I think it started hitting me this year especially because we're kind of me meeting a crossroads right now of trying to decide whether we want to continue playing basketball or sorry, whether we want to really start pushing for the music thing. And so, Two feet in. and it's what's so scary about that is it's like we've known, done basketball our whole lives. It's kind of a safety net, even though we love it, love it, love it, love it. We know that where we're going to be heard is through music. So we want to pers pursue music. And as this like sort of deadline is, is kind of creeping us up on us, it just really started checking in for me. And I was like, whoa, like this is about to be a real thing if we let it. You know, and that was kind of scary because we sort of talked about it and it was like, we're not going to live life the same if we really decide to push for this. And that was scary because I have a lot of very comfortable habits that I don't know if I'm ready to get rid of. We all do, right? <laughs> right, right. So, you know, that leads me to my next question. You know, you're talking about, you know, how you got to see yourself there and, and envision it. So what's the ultimate vision, you know, for you guys in your life that people can look out for? You know, they know you as basketball superstars, but what is the ultimate vision for you guys? And have you thought about it that far? Um, I'd say we've definitely put like a little thought into it. We, we essentially kind of look at it as like, you know, like the one step at a time leading up to like a bigger picture. And, and for us, I feel like, I feel like it's like a it's like a puzzle. You have like all these pieces that you kind of have to put together in order to create this bigger picture that we like envision for ourselves. And I think to become like established like in our craft and to really influence people on like another level is something that we really ultimately see ultimately would love to happen for ourselves and we believe can happen. Um, just because again, just that faith that we have in kind of our calling and in, in God and, and in ourselves. And um, and in the amazing people around us, I we feel like, especially if you look at kind of like the times that we're in right now, it's very sensitive. Like it's a very sensitive time right now. And so, and we believe in timing. We don't believe in anything as a coincidence. We believe everything happens for a reason. As artists, as as in, as people, um, I feel like we want people to know us more. Um, we've kind of, like Dakota said, had to be very selective about the things that we've chosen to put out about ourselves. And it is very difficult to be open when there's so many negative 
when you're opening yourself for the, up for that vulnerability when there's so many negative things constantly being said because there's one thing that I also have said. It's, uh, excuse my cussing in this, but I say good people get shitted on. Um, and it's just the kind of the unfortunate truth. And, and um, but thankfully though, it doesn't, like you don't have to let your circumstances become you. And so I feel like at the end of the day for us, like we almost want to be like that inspiration for people when it's like, when it's like you feel like you can't get somewhere, somebody's told you you can't do something or you do feel like your circumstances are just holding you back or whatever it is. Like I, and, and I want people to know like our stories, like if people really knew, like we, we are always together, but we definitely have different like experiences, experiences and different like things that we had to go through that kind of made us who we are today. And Dakota, like kind of talking about earlier, how she feels like I'm just a very like open, forgiving person. Like I had to go through different experiences and kind of like really reflect on them that made me that way essentially. And I want people to kind of know our stories a little more and the fact that there's two of us almost kind of makes it that much more enticing, I think. Um, and because they're different and I think people would just love to assume that they're the same when they're really not, we kind of consider ourselves like a, like a yin and yang. Like we're two, two parts of a yeah. whole, but like we're different. Yeah. Yin, yin and yang. Yeah. Anyways. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to help her out. Uh, yin. Yin. But um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I would say that the ultimate goal is to definitely, definitely push for music and to and sort of push for other obviously opportunities with, within, you know, entertainment as well, you know. But for, for the most part, we really just want to let our voices be heard. And and when I say that, like some people might hear our music and be like, Well, what message are you trying to send there? And I and I think that that, that, that's kind of like defeating the point of what I'm actually saying. It's like we want people to enjoy our music and dance to our music and feel how they want to feel with our music. But it's like once, we sing about experiences yeah, and things like that. But it's like once you and, – and there's been songs that we're working on that kind of go reach into that deeper level of like emotional, you know, struggle. But um, it's really more so about like, okay – us as people I feel like when people hear our music and when people get to sort of hear our stories through our music they'll be able to gain a better understanding of us and then they start getting a better understanding of us then we'll be able to really start you know vocalizing you know how we feel about things or how we want to help situations or you know what I mean and people will want to listen right it's where right now timing. people are so stubborn and so obstinate and nobody wants to feel like they are a submissive to anybody and because of that sort of mentality people cl are have closed ears they close their ears off and they're like oh you're just telling me this because you think you're better than me and it's like no so until people really get to know us and really understand our true intentions, they're never going to fully have open ears to what we have to say. I was just noticing how you guys, you guys do this thing with your eyes. I don't know if you, anybody told you, but you, you just, you just gear, you just guys gaze at each other when you guys are talking about one another, especially when I talked about the best part, I just noticed that it's so cute. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's a good old person. <laughs> so, you know, what will be the ideal collaboration for you guys? Ooh. Huh. I know Dylan automatically is already thinking. You can answer mine. So Dylan's would probably be Bryson Tiller because she has a deep infatuation. Wow. That's no, I'm just kidding. Wow. No, but you no, he's he really... City. Huh? I'm 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 in DC, so I'm from really? yeah. So Bryson, that whole movement started in my backyard. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely ideal. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. No, <laughs> yeah, he's he's he just has such a cool vibe, such a cool sound to him. He's a and, very authentic artist, and and that's something that I just think is a very hard thing to do in an industry that could potentially corrupt you. Um, change, straight like that. Straight like that. <laughs> <laughs> straight like that. So. Yeah, that I mean him. Um, I think that like Drake would be amazing. I think that um, like there's even like female artists like JoJo. She's absolutely incredible to us. Um, there's like so many people. It's honestly I like, know, it's so overwhelming hard. how many people we would it's love so hard. to work with <sighs> musically. Hopefully, they want to work with us one day. It, it's so hard because I'm like literally sitting here. I'm a sound person. So I don't really go off of like people's fame or anything like that. I go off like a, their sound. So there's been like, there's even underground artists who I think would be an ideal collaboration for me just because of their sound. And I William. feel like, 
I feel, yeah, William uh, Singe, I want to say his name is. Um, he's kind of like a like YouTube Instagram sensation, and then just kind of kept going, like growing and glowing. That's my my thing, growing and glowing. Um, but like, so when I hear like certain sounds that people have that you know I'm not able to to create or or make just on my own or Dylan, it's like, and I feel like they would sound really well together. That's when I'm like, this would be like freaking beautiful, like a masterpiece. So I would say that I kind of go more on that, and I really like like a party next door sound like right. i could never but create it's not that even kind just like the sound it's even just like working period like with like 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 writing the song or like you know like the creative process we love the creative process so it doesn't even necessarily have to be like i mean like even like freaking taylor swift she's an incredible songwriter uh pharrell yeah, john cool legend work, like they're amazing so john not legend. even just like the sounds but even just like that creative process would be like absolutely inspiring yeah it would be an experience in itself and yeah. that would be really that would be just amazing so as you know, a lot of um, people look up to you, especially the young, you know, women and men. So what is your advice to them as far as pursuing their dreams and not um, getting stuck? Honestly, just like I said, like the theme of kind of most of our answers, which is just you have to believe in yourself first. And it's not even like an arrogant or a selfish thing. It's it's literally just that that faith, that confidence. And that's why Hebrews 11 1 is um probably my favorite scripture because it just talks about that faith and it talks about it being something that we can't see, but we just kind of have to know it's there and, and give it, give us that confidence. Um, and so I think that that's probably the advice that I would give is like, never give up. If you truly want to do something, if you love something again, I don't believe in like coincidences. If you think something is for you, then if that thought didn't come into your head for no reason. So I feel like no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what people try to tell you, you should never let anybody hold you back from pursuing whatever it is that you believe in. 